Welcome back, Supers. This is a quick update video. Obviously, I'm not in my studio or even in my new office. I am here uh, at the Polynesian Resort overlooking the Magic Kingdom. How cool is that, right? Uh, so I've been on vacation, so I appreciate you all sticking along with me for the last like 10 days while we uh, took some time to, to be together and connect and have a lot of fun, uh, especially getting to see the, you know, my kids go on rides and Dom be scared of every, like literally everything. Uh, I have a, I might have to do a vlog video. I'm not positive just yet. We'll, we'll see what happens uh, with time and all that. I might actually have uh, my wife, Melissa, edit that video. So we'll see if that comes, comes to fruition. But in the meantime, I wanted to take uh, some time to answer some questions that I've gotten in the comments from all of you. Uh, so let's get to that. Honest Lady asks, I've been lost in the sauce and trying to catch up on your videos, sir. Well, ding, ding. Thank you so much for watching all these videos. It is absolutely uh, much appreciated. I love that people learn and learn with me at the same time. Uh, always, always great. So she says, but I do have a question. What if someone had an idea for, uh, I, what if someone had an idea of a tech invention but can't find any startup money, what would you suggest? Question mark, question mark, question mark. What I would suggest is get the idea as fleshed out as possible as if you were going to make it. Then, because you don't have the money necessarily to go down that road of manufacturing and sourcing materials and everything, uh, or even developing the software, especially if we're talking about something with tech, what I would do is take that opportunity to go and get a patent for it. So you, patents can run you know, $10,000 plus, a lot of money, but there is an opportunity for you to take what you do have, which is time, and convert that into learning the, process, the patent process and securing yourself a patent. Once you have the patent, now you can go and find other people to work with you and bring money to the table, or you take that patented idea and take it to someone to license like a big tech manufacturer or something of that uh, or you know to to get collect on every time it's it's made at that point you might want a lawyer but at least you have something to go on and something to get started with rather than not having anything to get started with junior asks, hey Joe I have been listening to you for a while now I enjoy watching your shark tank breakdown videos my friend Joe and I are trying to start our own business but we need to be able to get in front of investors what is the best way to do that assuming you have the idea all flushed out and everything uh, that you feel confident enough and protected enough insulated enough um, because you do run the risk of investors saying, hey, that's a great idea, guess what I have? Lots of money, I'm gonna go do it on my own, I don't really need you, right? So hopefully the thing that you're creating is specialized enough in, in a field that you're uh, well versed in enough and is something that like only you could bring to the table, right? Or, or you and maybe a hundred other people on the planet, not thousands, not millions of people on the planet. So what that enables you to do is uh, get the idea, again, flesh that out as much as you possibly can. Take that idea and convert that idea into uh, meetings with potential investors, right? And, and maybe you, you circumvent the investors altogether, go straight to licensing, but you might wanna go and get yourself a, uh, a, a patent at that point, right? So we're back to that patent idea. Go and get, get it patented. If you don't have the money for a patent, learn the process, get it, get it done, right? Protect yourself as much as you possibly can, or you're going to run the risk of somebody taking the idea and running with it. Uh, those investors that would want to invest in you, again, once, if you're like, hey, we're gonna create this, a great example of that is Hello Prenup. I had the those wonderful ladies come on the show, uh, Julie, uh, if her, you know, and, and uh, do some, some videos and stuff with us here on the channel so go and check that out but what uh what made their pitch special is that she you know julie is a lawyer <laughs> you know she's not trying to hire lawyers to figure out the process she is the lawyer so she's she needs expertise in other areas and she has that opportunity because she's the lawyer to make that happen so you know stay on the grind um figure out you know your patent process the way best way to protect yourself and as far as investors 
Uh, you could go to pitch competitions. The problem with pitch competitions, and one of the reasons we haven't done a pitch competition on this channel is because I, I want to protect people from their ideas being stolen. So, but we do, a, I will do a pitch competition coming up soon with a little bit of a twist. So it'll be an opportunity for you to make a short video, a 30 second video uh, and have me react to it. So stay tuned. Cause we're going to, I'm going to, I'll probably shoot that video while I'm here actually after this one while I'm thinking about it. I hope that helps junior PB Jeffy 27 says, how do you make a product? I have ideas, but I don't even know where to start. So if you have an idea, right, you have lots of ideas. First off, get yourself an idea book so you can write down every single idea that you have in that idea book, which enables you to go back uh, and pull from old ideas and, and kind of maybe come up with something brand new out of a bunch of other ideas or things that inspired you from the from the start. Once you have uh, an idea that you are like, okay, I think I wanna move with this. You wanna get your MVP, that's your minimum viable product. So what's the smallest, cheapest version of a product that you could make? And like, because we have these, you know, grand ideas, we're big dreamers, right? So we, we wanna like, we can add this feature and that function and this widget and bam, all of a sudden we have this super cool, solves every problem. You don't necessarily need to solve every problem out of the gate, right? You just need to make sure that you're solving one problem out of the gate with an opportunity to, to get into more markets later on. But I wouldn't really quite focus on that part. What you want to focus on is, is okay, if we made this super basic version of the product that solved just one, maybe two, one and a half problems, what's the cheapest we could get that made for, right? So what's the that enables you to make a prototype that's way more scaled back than saying we have to make, you know, let's start with an iPhone, <laughs> you know, and we're gonna have all the bells and whistles of the current iPhone for model one, version one. Well, well, no, no, no. We wanna start with, <laughs> what does it gotta do? What's the number one solve? Well, we gotta be able to make phone calls so we can call people and talk to people. Okay, so that's the first thing. So let's just figure out, can we make a phone? <laughs> Right? Can we make literally a phone that can answer calls and you know make calls? That's it. We're not talking about texting. We're not talking about any of the other features. We just want to be able to do that. Once we got that piece, depending on how much money we've spent sunk into research and development, now we can take that and move into okay. How do we how do we do text messages? How do we take pictures with it? How do we surf the internet with it? Like we can go into all those other opportunities, but first we got to start with the minimum viable product. We need a phone. Ring, 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 banana phone. So a dietitian says, that's the name of the, uh, of the super who wrote this question. Can you please explain how the sharks make money off of these investments? Do they only make money if the entrepreneur sells? A couple different ways. It depends on how the deal is structured, but what you, what, generally if it's just a straight equity deal they can sell equity in their parse portion of the equity later on for a higher value that'll enable them to cash out some of the percentage as well as you know collect money from that sale another way would be as if they structured like a, a royalty deal on every sale they collect a little bit of money um, there's other things they could do where I forget the oh, what's the term um, when when the owners take money out of the business uh i can't think of the i'm it's still on vacation break can't think of the term but there's a term where when you take when the, when the owners take money out of the business uh to say pay for expenses or um personal you know because they're not maybe not taking a paycheck they're like oh i'll take a portion of the profits when they take their cut that the sharks could if it was part of the deal take a, a dividend i guess a, technically it's a dividend uh they could take a dividend out of the business as well. Uh, that I've only seen that come up once or twice in the show. Generally, it's a royalty deal, or you're just waiting until you you sell the company. So you're investing in the money in, waiting for it to sell, or either a hundred percent of it or, or a portion of it to another investor, and you move on with the with the profits. I hope that answers your question, a dietitian. So, uh, Locutus, shout out to Super Locutus, who shows up a lot and a lot in my live streams. I need to do more live streams. A lot of things. Once I get settled uh, into uh, part of Flea Solutions, we'll we'll be doing more of those. And I had really a lot of fun doing the uh, Hospital 2.0. 
a video game live stream on the channel as well. So Locuta says you should do a video discussing royalty versus equity, discussing the pros and cons of each. So yeah, I could do a whole video just on that. Uh, but the, the, the basics of it is uh, when we're talking about a royalty, generally you're getting paid on every sale or so many sales uh, per, uh, you know, for sales. So you're getting a, 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 a you know, dollar or two dollars or 20 cents, some amount of money at collecting it to you every time it makes a sale. And usually that stuff usually cashes out uh, either quarterly, monthly, quarterly, uh, buy you annually something to that effect. They're not gonna st every time you sell one you're gonna print a check It's it's gonna be either monthly or quarterly generally uh, when it comes to Just having the equity the equity is like buying a stock You know you're buying stock of that business and that's a, gives an opportunity to sell it uh, later down the line like we talked about in the previous uh, question, so that's that's that. That's really the difference, right? So the royalty deal makes sense. Um, there was a great example. It's the innovative Iraq innovation or OQ innovation. They, uh, <clears throat> they were selling these beanies with a light in it and they ended up going for a royalty deal because they knew that, you know, this is not a unique she's she didn't patent the product so it's really a pure hustle which there's nothing wrong with uh but it's all about her and getting out there and getting those sales getting the sales getting the sales in that case i don't know that it made a lot of sense i mean you're giving a bigger spotlight because you got the shark tank spotlight with a shark and you're going out there and giving that spotlight to that product but i don't know that um you know in, in the in Look, Mr. Wonderful loves his royalty deals because he wants money to come back in and sometimes in two or three times. And then he's able to take that money and go invest in other businesses as well as get a small equity portion for when they do cash out or if he decides to cash out of the business if he doesn't like the direction in which it's going. So there's always pros and cons to it. You know, royalty deal can really suck money right out of a business uh, or especially early on. But if your profit margins are high enough, um, you know, if you're able to mark up the product and not like to a certain point where it's like, hey, we're making so much money just to have the um, the availability of the, you know, the, the smarts and the education uh, that a shark brings to the table, then that's then it works, right? You're paying a price basically for consulting, a, con a form of consulting fee without having to put up, you know, $150,000 to go work with Mr. Wonderful. And with that said, I've had people come to me uh, in, you know, and contact me about like, hey, I have this idea and I really want to do it and I would love for you to either invest or I'd love for you to get involved. Uh, and here's, uh, you know, a portion of the company. Uh, you know, for me right now, it's it's difficult. I have to really pick and choose my battles as to what I can and can't do between, you know, YouTube, my current consulting clients, my, uh, you know, part of Fleet Solutions and all the things that I got to do there to get that that tra you know, that train back on the rails and, and operating at 100% efficiency or close to it. So there's a lot of things uh, that it's just, I don't have the time to jump, you know, to get my hands uh, dirty and get involved with. Dom Joseph, love that name. My son's Dominic and I'm, <laughs> I'm Joseph. Joe, do you want to be a shark? Uh, no, this is, that's a great question, but no, that is not why I'm doing this show. Uh, at some point, it would be it would be incredible to to get to that point where I could could go and be a shark. That would be really cool, uh, really amazing, uh, incredible, like just an incredible experience as a whole. But uh, you know, I'm I'm here for the entrepreneurs. I'm here to make sure that they get the education and and everything that you can do to prepare yourself for the road to come because this is a very difficult road so i i love the idea of going to be a shark um but you know i personally i gotta really feel passionate about the product uh that i would be putting my involvement into like i i just talked about businesses that have reached out and it's like oh well, we'll give you a portion of the company to come and and you know consult with us and and things like that so you know it's it's a balancing act uh, you know trying to balance business and and life friends family uh extended family vacations right and all the things between in between and making sure that i'm getting the most 
and giving the most uh, out of what I'm I'm doing with my time. So, to me, um, I don't know. I don't know if I, you know, it would have to be. It would really have to be the right opportunity for me to want to be a shark and and you know the right business that I'd be in front of or would be in front of me to to want and go and do that. Um, so it'd be fun, but I, you know, it's very much not why I do this channel. Uh, which is also why I don't necessarily give out my like, would I invest in this company, would I not? Because the stakes are not the same in which I would be putting my own money in that. So if you hear me say that, uh, you know, like I really wanna invest in this company, that would be something where, you know, it would be a way, it would have to be so incredible and I would have to get it like that and be able to add something to the table. And we hear the sharks say that all the time. I can't add anything to this. I don't think I should invest. And I would want to add because I would want to be deeply involved with any business that I would go into uh, <clears throat> into doing. Fadria uh, says, Dear Super Joe, how are you doing, buddy? Uh, I've been meaning to ask you, you highly recommend responding to reviews on social media. And I'm looking back at my Facebook page, Instagram and Google business. I realized I haven't been responding to those. Is it too late to respond to them now? They've been posted for months and sometimes even years. What do you reckon? Well, what I reckon is, is take the time to respond to them. You know, it's not about the person that you're responding to. It's about the people that are going to read it and have a reaction to what you're writing, right? So it, this is all about the, you know, writing to the future. So take the time, respond to those comments as much. I try to respond to every YouTube comment that I get, either here on the channel or on in the studio, um, the comment studio on YouTube. I would love, I wish that the tools were better. They are woefully, under underwhelmingly under helpful in figuring out helping me quickly identify people that have commented before and i want to make sure i'm commenting to them um and all that but you really want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward to at least make an attempt to get to reconcile with those people especially the ones that had a bad experience it's so critical even in what the ones that had a great experience if you by responding to them, it shows that you cared enough to take the time, to take the 30 seconds, the 10 seconds to say something. Thank you so much for your response. Or, you know, here's the negative one. Like, thank you so much for your response. Uh, we're working on trying to get this resolved. Uh, please reach out to me. Here's an email, you know, uh, help at superjoeparter.com. Uh, reach out to me and let's get, let's see if we can get this resolved and, and fixed. They probably won't reach out to you, that's fine, but it shows to somebody else that you cared enough to take the time to respond and not just ignore it and let it fly under the radar. You really wanna make sure that other people know that you are for real. And that's one of the reasons why I shoot this channel the way I do. I try to make it as unedited as possible, as raw as possible, because I want you to understand that who you're dealing with I am who I am and this is what I do and this is I've been around business 30 you know 30 plus years uh, going into 30 plus years at this point in my life and it's so important that I think when you look at who are you going to listen to who are you going to follow uh, online and and take advice from that you're getting people that you're following people who are actually real and so much so that like this is an awesome experience like getting to stay here um so i'll close out with this the, we, I, I would love to say that we stayed at this hotel at the polynesian for the whole entirety of the trip we did not there was be way too much money for what it was uh but we set up our trip to be at the magic kingdom the last two days of our trip so prior to that we were at uh, the all-star movies and that was great it was a great experience right we, we drove um, that's why you saw the preview video. I'm going to be shooting more videos probably tomorrow on the road while Melissa's doing her end of the driving. And I really want um, you, everybody, to just know like this is real. This is what it is. So they're at the beach. They're at the beach. They're at the pool right now. So I'm going to head over to there uh, before we head out to dinner tonight. So I hope you have an amazing day. I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate you not only taking care of yourself, but making sure that other people go be super. I'll be putting out some go be super uh, apparel very, very soon. So love you all. Take care. And uh, I'll see you in one of these two videos over here or over here, whatever doesn't block the Magic Kingdom.